Kabbalists refer to the revelation of spirituality, the discovery of the spiritual nature of reality, they liken that to the recognition that we are right here living in a dream. And so as they wake up to the spiritual world, they refer to this world as mere imagination, as a dream. And therefore they say we were as dreamers. And now we have discovered that we were dreaming. So they liken all that we are familiar with here, everything that we experience in this world through our five senses, with ourselves and our personality and our name and our character and our friends and this whole material existence and the material universe and the planet that we're on and what we see on the news and the weather that sometimes is more pleasant, sometimes is less pleasant and our family and our dog and whatever you want. They liken all of that to a dream. But today I want to go into how was that dream created in the first place? So this dream that we are in today, if we kind of um, go a little deeper into how it was conceived, how it was shaped and formed, how it was designed, what has created the reality that we are in right now, if we kind of go a little deeper into that, it will help us recognize that we are in a dream world right now okay so let's start from the beginning so reality was first this okay let's do this um okay so at first reality was this um one created being right um let's just make it a bit more a bit thicker so you can see better How's this? Okay. So reality at first, the creation at first, the only thing that was created was the will to receive. This is how uh, creation was created. This is the one substance that we are. Now, let's try to really disconnect from where we are now and, and really uh, move away from our bodies and our material existence um, and just you know sail with me a little bit let's try to put some some feeling into into this diagram infuse it with some emotion so that we can kind of sense where we came from okay let's try to do it together so reality starts from this one created being and at first this desire that was created was bonded with the creator it was in perfect equivalence with the force that created it let's let's actually add like a like a highlighting okay um okay that's it's not that accurate but you get the idea so yeah so this, this force that created the desire and the desire itself were bonded. They were together. In that state, there is no space and no time. That's an important concept. Why? Because when, when, when the creation is one and it's in direct contact, in perfect adhesion, in perfect connection with the force that created it, there is no separation, there is no distance, no in, uh, inequality, no disparity, no difference between the desire and the light that fulfills it. And because there is no gap, we're talking about a spiritual gap. There's no material distance yet, right? But because there is no separation, no 
inequality, there is no space created between them. There is no sense of, of lack of equivalence of form. And that means that there is no time and no space and no motion. Everything is in one place and as if in one time, beyond time, before time. There's just perfect adhesion between the desire to receive, which is like an embryo, like, a, like, a, like a, an embryo inside the womb, and there is a womb that is enveloping it, that is, is washing it and warming it with love and care and absolute bestowal, covering that desire to receive that was created, fulfilling it, and that's it. That is us. That's us. Okay? That is what we are in the true highest state of reality. But then we have no sense of it, right? We don't feel anything, just like we don't remember how it was to be an embryo in our mother's room. It was, it was great. It was terrific. Uh, every one of you came from there, uh, and it was probably great. You were all balanced with your environment. Everything you needed was uh, taken care of for you. It was all great. No problems, no troubles, no bank accounts. All good, all great. But we don't feel anything from that. We don't remember anything. Why? Because there was no conscious being, right? So in order to create a consciousness, the creator has to separate the created being from itself. How does that create the dream world that we are in right now? That's what we want to discover. We want to see how that separation from the creator of the created being created a sense of this dream that we exist in right now. So what happens is that as this created being starts moving away from the creator, starts being born, coming out of the womb of the creator, there's no physical distances yet. There's no physical reality. So what does it mean to move away from the womb? What does it mean to come out? It is a difference of qualities. The quality of being in the womb is means being connected to the quality of oneness the creator's consciousness is a con consciousness of oneness there's no separation there's no differences in order for the created being to start moving away it has to start feeling separation so what happens is that this creature is now starting to be divided and shattered to many many pieces and so gradually um yeah my, my pieces don't look that great i know you can you can have a laugh it's fine it looks it looks like the created being was electrified <laughs> but this is kind of what's happening because what's happening here is is that more and more pieces are being created. It's as though the created being is being cracked. It's being shattered. It's being divided into many, many pieces. And I'm going to use all kinds of synonyms for this to just stall until I finish the, uh, the last few pieces here. Um, right, so you get the idea many many pieces and what happens is that this is the only way in which the created being can move away from the creator what does it mean to move away it, it's not walking away there's no physical distances it is becoming opposite to oneness and so instead of one instead of being one it starts being many instead of being 
bonded, it starts being separated. Instead of being one creation, there begins to be a shattered pieces of creation. And so what comes in between those pieces is something that Kabbalists uh, refer to as coarseness. Uh, um, the gradually the intention for self starts enveloping and encapsulating and uh, wrapping each and every one of these pieces. So let's make it, okay, make it green. So every piece now starts being, um, again, wrapped, packaged. Every piece starts being isolated by this egoistic packaging which means the opposite quality to that of the creator the creator's quality is that of bestowal unconditional giving and the program that begins to envelop each piece of the created being is a program of reception of self-benefit right so that creates a separation from that state of oneness that separation creates the construct of time and space because now the desire to receive begins to feel that it is not in equivalence with the fulfillment it begins to feel far from the fulfillment what happens in our life when we feel like we're enjoying when we feel that we completely enjoy that we are totally enjoying ourselves what happens to the sense of time and what happens when um when we feel that we're suffering when we feel that we are really looking for fulfillment so uh roy says time flies when you when you enjoy yeah and it never ends when you suffer exactly so what happens is that by this egoistic disparity of form the sensation of time is created because we are now far from the fulfillment we are far from the pleasure and the egoistic growth grows our consciousness so suddenly these pieces of creation are feeling themselves conscious and they also sense that they need to achieve something that they are in a deficit that they are incomplete that is the sense of time in our dream world but it's not just that there's also space and because these pieces are now far from each other, they don't feel themselves as one. Because these pieces feel separated, they feel a distance between them. And that distance that we feel that it's not all in one place, that creation is now divided to many different pieces that are not connected, that gives us a sense of separation between us and the others us and the whole of reality and so in our consciousness that was now conceived this imaginary egoistic consciousness there's also a sense of space all of a sudden put time and space together you get motion which is the the movement in space and time and so that is how the dream world that we are in today is created through this separation between the consciousness of oneness that is the creator and a consciousness of separation of egoism of disparity of form of inequivalence with the quality of bestowal which is where we are now but in truth remember this is all just a perception the truth is that we are pieces of one thing you and 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 me and everyone else in the world we are one thing and we think that we are many different material 
separated 8 billion bodies today living each their own story in some place separate from the other places in the world and what we're doing right now is we are recognizing that we're actually dreaming and we are one being that is awakening from the dream so let's stop here and tell me if you have any any questions about this and then we'll uh will go forward. So go ahead, Mike. I want to know, uh, probably all of us want to know, why could, what could be the reason or purpose for shattering the oneness in creation? Why, why this shattering happened to begin with? I mean, I, I mean, talking from the position that the creator is the good that does good and besides whom there is none else, that means uh, the in separation was intended what was the reason for this intention to separate us and yeah. shatter us only for us to come and consciously struggle now to bind ourselves together. Mm. Thank you. Mm. I'm, I'm enjoying every, every word that, that you're saying, because this is, um, this is the, the ultimate, the ultimate question. Uh, let, let me also kind of add my own words to it. If the creator wants to bestow, why the hell doesn't he bestow? What's the problem? Make a creature, fulfill it with pleasure. End of story. Everything's good. Why do we need this whole detour? This whole, this whole path, right? You need to ask it with a bit more, a bit more pain and torments. Look at all these thousands of years of suffering. Look at what's happening in the world today. It's going into chaos. How is, how can you see that? Can you say that everything's going to goodness? It's going bad. It's going sour. And we've suffered already thousands of years. People are oppressed. The world is going hungry, half the world. The other half is, you know, making sure that, that the first half stays hungry. What the hell's going on? This is the great privilege that we are given as created beings. And at the same time, it is the greatest paradox that will only be solved when we come to the, the purpose of creation. But the thing, but the key, the key to, to come to grips with this question is actually to recognize that we are living in a dream. See, the creator had to create consciousness from nothing, from existence, from absence, it had to create existence. The creator is existence from existence, as it is called in, by, by Kabbalists. We are existence from absence so in order to create a consciousness you have to put it through a process of development now from the creator's point of view there is no time still there is no uh long winding uh sorrowful painful long process it all happens at once the purpose of creation already is completed. There is no question. There is no doubt. There is no trouble. It just all happens at once. There is no uh, need to go through the process. On our part, unfortunately, we have to attain that, that there is actually no suffering and no pain, and it was all a dream that was just uh, was just there as a mirage, as, as, as an illusion. We have to attain that. And until we do, this dream seems very real and very scary at times and doesn't look like it's coming, coming from a good and all-knowing and all-inclusive and bestowing creator. It looks like if it's coming from someone, it's the worst person in the world, it's the worst kind of force in the world. The, the um, you know, to be, to be colloquial about it, the creator sucks, right? You, you, need to, you need to feel these things as a Kabbalist. Don't be afraid of that. Cur curse the creator if, you, if that's what you feel like. Just don't forget about him. He wants us to develop a consciousness. In order to do so, we have to start from a state of complete oppositeness. 
we have to see the creator as evil that does bad, not good that does good. And from that state, from that mindset, from that level of consciousness, we then rise and start discovering that it's all one big dream that was created for us to attain the ultimate state of perfection, which is becoming like him, only conscious. That, that is, uh, that's something that on every spiritual degree, you will find yourself cursing the creator, not agreeing with the creator, and then justifying the creator. And through these concealments and revelations, dream world, real world, justify uh, cursing and justifying through these steps we climb up the spiritual ladder so i'm i'm really happy about the the question because it's 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 a classic question that um that shows that the material is is getting in is sinking in good stuff